I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on calculus. In this video, we'll discuss a very important question based on optimization. The question here is, a square based pyramid is inscribed in a sphere. Find the dimensions of the pyramid to have maximum volume. Find the ratio of the volume of this pyramid and the sphere. Diagram is provided with you. We have a square based uh, prism inscribed within a sphere. You can always pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Now let's begin with sketching a two dimensional equivalent of the given situation. So I will inscribe the pyramid within a sphere and take a two dimensional view. That is to say, we'll have a circle and within a circle, we can actually have a triangle to represent the prism. So let us say this is the circle for us. And within this circle, we are going to draw the triangular based uh, pyramid. Let's take the diagonal, let's say over here. So that's the diagonal for us. And uh, the height along the center. So let me join these points. So that becomes the square based pyramid. Okay. Let's say that's the center of the sphere connecting with one of these points, we get the radius R. Let's label the points as AB being the diagonal of the square based prism, point O as the center, and let's have P and Q as the points of the altitude. Now from here, we can write down that the, the height of the prism will be equal to PQ and the diagonal AB will be equal to we can actually find using the the triangle here let's say that theta is the angle being made in that case we can write down oq as equal to the cosine component right this component as the cosine component of r it becomes r cos theta and aq as the sine component r sine theta so in that case ab can be written as 2 times aq And that gives you the value as 2 times r sine theta. The height h will be equal to r plus oq, which is r plus r cos theta. Right. So we can write height as taking r common. We can write this as 1 plus cosine theta. Now, what is the side length S of the square? Since volume will be base area times height, so the side length S will be equal to, you have to divide AB by square root 2, right? So it is AB over square root 2. That gives you the side length. So, so we can say side length of the square equals to AB 
divide by square root 2 and AB is 2R sin theta. So that gives you side of the square as equal to square root 2 r sin theta. Okay. So we have the side length as square root 2 r sin theta. So we can now get the volume of the square based prism which is one third area of base. Let's write down the formula first. Area of base which is a square times height. So in this particular case, it is going to be one third of area of the base is S square, which is square root of 2 R sine theta whole square times the height, which is R times 1 plus cos theta. So that becomes the volume. So when you open this up, we get volume as square root square will be 2. So we get 2 over 3. R square and R will become R cube. We have sine square theta times 1 plus cos theta. So So we get the volume as 2 by 3 r cube sine square theta plus times 1 plus cosine theta. To maximize, we need to find the critical number. Right? So from here, we'll find the first derivative. So the idea is to find critical numbers. So on this page, what we have learned here is that the side length S of the square is square root 2 r sine theta and the height of the prism is 2 r or we can say r times one plus cos theta since we need to find the dimensions of the pyramid and we have the volume which is two third of r cube sine square theta one plus cos theta so let's take this on the new page and then find the first derivative to get our answer so the volume is two third of r cube sine square theta times 1 plus cos theta. To maximize, we'll differentiate with respect to theta. R is a constant here, right? So we get 2 by 3 R cube product rule. So that gives us 2 sine theta cos theta times 1 plus cos theta plus sine square theta times Derivative of 1 plus cos theta is minus sine theta. So that simplifies. We can take sine theta common. So we get 2 over 3 r cube. So and if I take sine theta common, in that case, we are left with 2 cos theta times 1 plus cos theta minus sine square theta. To find the critical number, uh, we have one condition now. And that is, we could equate sine theta to zero. Well, in that case, volume is also zero, right? So that, that doesn't really give us the maximum volume. So we'll discard this value. Remember the value of theta is between 0 to pi by 2 or 90 degrees. 
Now the other expression will be zero for, let's simplify this, we get here two cos theta plus two cos square theta minus sine square theta can be written as one minus cos square theta will equate this to zero for the other critical number. So opening this, we get two cos theta plus two cos square theta minus one plus cos square theta equals to zero. So that makes it three cos square theta plus two cos theta minus one equal to zero. We can factor this and that can be written as cos theta plus one times three cos theta minus one equals to zero. So that gives you two critical numbers, which is we have cos theta equals to minus one, or we have cos theta equals to one over three. So clearly the one which is of our interest is cos theta equals to one over three, since again, minus is not valid. We are working in the domain where theta is between zero to 90, we expect positive values. Now, for cos theta equals to one over three, let me just uh, sketch a triangle here. If cos theta is one over three, means this is one and that is three, the value of sine theta will be what? So that gives you square root of eight, right? So in that case, we get sine theta equals to square root of eight over three, right? Now let us calculate the, the volume by substituting these values within the equation for the volume, which is two over three r cube sine square theta times one plus cos theta. We have the value of sine theta and cosine theta to substitute. So we can now calculate the volume, which is equal to two over three. The expression is R cube sine square theta times one plus cos theta, or let me write down one plus cos theta within bracket. where cos theta is equal to one over three and sine theta is, well, keep it square root eight itself, since when we square this, it will become eight, right? So easier calculation. So the volume here is two by three R cube, sine square theta will be eight over nine, and one plus cos theta will be 1 plus 1 over 3, and that gives you 2 by 3 r cube 8 over 9, I mean, times 4 over 3, and that is equal to 9 times 9 is 81, and 4 times 2, 8 times 8, 64 r cube. So that becomes the maximum volume, right? So this is your maximum volume. Now for this volume, let's find the dimensions since we need to find the dimensions, right? Of our pyramid. So, so in our case, what we calculated here was something like this. We have a square based uh, pyramid let's uh, show the height in a different color okay so what we found is uh, the height which is this is the height h which is equal to 
r times 1 plus cos theta, right? r times 1 plus cos theta, which is 4 by 3r. We have the side length s, which is equal to square root 2 times r sine theta, right? Let me highlight the values which you are substituting for the dimensions. So we have square root 2 r times sine theta, which is square root 2 r square root 8 over 3, which is also 4 over 3, 16 square root, right? R. So we get the dimensions of the square base pyramid. It has side of 4 by 3. So we can write down the dimensions as we have a square base side 4 by 3r and height h equals to 4 by 3r. So that becomes the dimensions. And now, the second part of this question here is find the ratio of volume of the pyramid and the sphere. So we already know the volume, which is this, of the pyramid. As far as the volume of sphere is concerned, so let's write volume of pyramid over volume of sphere so we get here uh, the volume is 64 r cube over 81 and that of the sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube right so that we can simplify and write down our expression which is let's simplify it in a different way so we'll write this as 64 over 81, become simpler, and we'll write 4 over 3. Pi is in the denominator, okay? So that gives you a better look at the fractions part. So it becomes 27 here, and that goes for 16 times. So we get the ratio as 16 over 27 pi. So that becomes the, the ratio. So that is the answer for the second part, which is the ratio of the volume of the two, right? So I hope with this, you understand and appreciate how this question could be solved. So we have our dimensions as uh, the height being 4 over 3R, the side being 4 over 3R, and the ratio of the volume being 16 by 27 pi. Perfect. So that is how you're going to solve this particular question. So the idea here is that we can actually work out with the diagonal of the square, find the volume, and then first derivative will give us the critical number. And once we have the critical number, we can find the volume, maximum volume of the sphere. I hope that helps. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.